So I get a lot of questions from my customers when we're using different weights. Why this weight for this and why this weight for that? And I thought we'd do this little video to show you guys my opinion on why I use weights. And I'm gonna start with the simple bullet sinker. Mainly I use that for rigging situations when I'm on the mud flats. That sinker, if it hits the mud, doesn't just destroy the mud apart and leave a mud trail when you're rigging. And I also use it, it, it actually, when it hits the mud, it kind of goes in like a bullet instead of an explosion. So that's why I'll use that. Now for weeds, I also use that bullet sinker so it doesn't grab, so your rod tip's not constantly getting grabbed by the weeds. It's used a lot in the Grand Rapids area, Winnie guys use a lot of bullet sinkers or small egg sinkers. The next one is gonna be your egg. I use it a lot for rigging walleyes in deep. Specifically, it's a good all around sinker for relatively snag free operations or using this in three quarters to one ounce and fishing vertical with let's say a plain hook and a crawler. But where the most questions come in is why do we use big rock runner bo bottom bouncers? Why, you know, why are we using this right now? And, and the, the simple answer to that is when you're working, when you're guiding, even fishing, you don't want to lose rigs. The more time your line is in the water, the more fish you're going to catch. So we're going to start with bottom bouncers. Bottom bouncers are one of the most snag resistant weights to use on the market. They've been around for years. A simple technique you can use if you're in really, really snaggy stuff is you can bend this straight up and that'll give you a little bit more clearance from the rock and your rig. Um, the, a better option is going with the Northland Slick Stick. This is one of the most weight, it is probably in my opinion, the most snag free weight on the market and it creates that noise that can add some extra attraction. So these two would be for your extreme situations. Big rocks like you see behind me. If I'm gonna rig, if this stuff, you see this on your side scan, if you see that under, you know, where you're fishing and there's fish in there, you're gonna need these two to get through there. And you're gonna need to fish them fairly vertical. Um, you don't want to, when you're in snaggy stuff, have 50 feet of line out. I guarantee whatever sinker you're gonna use, you're gonna get snagged. So remember that heavier weight and heavier cover and fish it way more vertical and that'll keep you snag free. And now we're gonna drop down to one of my favorites. It's the Rock Runner. This little guy here, when I'm going from sand to rock, or rock to sand, or even just fishing straight small cobble, you know, gravel, things like that, this is a really, really good sinker. And what I like about this one too is when you drop down to maintain contact with the bottom, it really shoots the signal back up because it comes down, it just spikes down and it lets you know, bam, there it is, and you can give it a crank and stay snag free. It also works great for spinners in relatively shallow water, you know, sand flats, things like that. The other one is, this is the plain walking sinker. You guys, I've, you've seen them around for years. Everyone uses these. I use these again on, a, on, a, on days where I know I'm gonna be fishing sand or gravel or whatever in a, in a single day on Malax. Or if you just don't know where you're gonna end up, this is a good sinker to start with. It simply attaches with a quick clip and it just kind of rolls over things. But again, you don't wanna be using, you know, a ton of line out with smaller sinkers. A good rule of thumb to use is the taller the sinker, the taller the sinker is going to be used when there's way more cover. So the longer the sinker will usually keep you out. The other one, the inline weight. These guys here are awesome. Just yesterday we were out with the crew and we caught 50 fish on this little guy and a three foot spinner. And this is a little different. So you have your weight and then your spinner is actually running behind it. So, and this is more of a do not touch bottom type deal to where the spinner is getting his action from the weight moving or, or wave action. So the inlines, basically basin trolling, maybe on the tops of the weeds, but in relatively snag free stuff. So you may say that's a lot of weights and it is a lot of weights, but there's one easy way to change them out. And that's the Northland quick change weight clevis. Basically you can swap out all of these except for a few of the weight options. And I'm gonna show you how I rig my rod to be able to change different weights on the spur of a moment. So all I do is I take my weight clevis and I run it on my line. Then I put a snap. And now if I have to go 
to an inline, I can go to an inline, snap it on, and I'm ready to go. I can run that 10 foot stuff, 10 feet, you know, 20 to 30 feet behind the boat. Now, if I want to keep my spinner on there and simply go to the rock runner, I can slide that on there and now I'm going. So you see I can go from inline to basically a vertical weight very, very easy with that quick change. And that right there saves me a ton of time during the day. And by simply putting the clevis and then a snap on your rod, you're gonna be able to utilize just about every sinker on the market today when you're pulling spinners or rigging. I hope some of these weight descriptions helped you guys out. And if you have any questions on weights, please list them in the comments below.